Hello there, I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to Particle Shop. Particle Shop adds particle brush features from Corel Painter into Adobe Photoshop as a plugin. You can use these brushes to paint natural effects like smoke, light, and fire, and supernatural effects like laser eye beams and energy bursts. There are also organic brushes for painting hair, fur, and textures. And for the fine artist slash photographer, there's several sketching, painting, and artistic effect brushes. So who is Particle Shop for? Particle Shop is for designers, artists, and photographers who want to leverage the power of particle brush technology to enhance their work in Photoshop with realistic or special effects. If you're not familiar with particle brushes, these are unique brushes that utilize real-life physics to make random and expressive brush strokes. Depending on the brush, some particles move on their own, and others move based on the input from your stylus. These brushes are best used with a Wacom tablet, but you can also use them with a mouse. One advantage to using a tablet is that you'll be able to vary your pen pressure and change the size or other properties of your brush strokes. Another benefit to using a tablet is that you'll be able to draw smoother and more expressive strokes by drawing naturally with a pen. Brushes can be purchased in themed packs of 15 brushes per pack. So for instance, we have dust and debris if you wanted to buy that pack, or if you wanted flames, you could buy that pack. And you can see examples of what each of these brushes are going to do. Once you've purchased some packs, they would show up here in your list of categories. And then below that, you have all of the brushes that are in that category. If we check out the starter pack, it gives you a sample of what each of these categories do. And then if you decide that you really like the light brushes or the flame brushes, you could go ahead and purchase the flame pack or the light pack to get more brushes. So how do we use Particle Shop? After you've installed Particle Shop, you'll want to open an image in Photoshop. This is just a single layer image here. Then I'm going to go to Filter, Painter, Particle Shop. And Particle Shop's going to load in its own little window here. This is the buy screen if you want to buy more brushes. You can just uncheck this if you don't want to see this every time you launch Particle Shop. You can close the window here, and we can do our particle painting in this interface. Do a little bit of painting here, and then click on Save down at the bottom, or Cancel if you don't want to keep the changes. We'll click on Save, and then those changes are applied here in Photoshop to our image. You could, of course, do an undo if you don't like those changes, and go back to the plugin and try again. Next, let's take a look at the toolbar over here on the left. The first tool is the brush tool. You have to have the brush tool selected to paint with these particle brushes. You can select the eraser, which is below it, if you want to erase part of your image or part of the effect. Right now I'm working on a single layer here, so if I'm erasing, I'm going to be erasing that image. I can also use Particle Shop on a separate layer, but the only disadvantage to that is you won't be able to see what's underneath while you're working. Next is the smudge tool. If we click on that, we can smudge stuff around, like so. If you want to do a cloning or maybe just kind of blend some of these effects so they're a little more natural. Next is the dropper tool. If we click on that, we can sample specific colors from within our piece. If you look up here, you can see in the color swatch, the colors changing depending on where I click with this sampler tool. And then below that is the temporal color palette, which lets you pick color using HSV. The vertical axis is your V for value. That's the lightness and darkness of your color. The horizontal axis is for your saturation. That's whether the color is more intense and saturated, or it's more gray and dull and muted. Then you have this outer ring which controls your hue. Is it gonna be a green color, a blue color, a red color, and so on. You have this checkbox for glow, which means that if you're using a brush like a fire brush or anything else that would glow in real life, that it's going to blend with the background properly. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that if your brush isn't working the way it should and it doesn't look like it's glowing, go ahead and just make sure that glow is checked. But for the most part, these brushes that are supposed to use glow will already have glow checked. Now if you start painting, your color palette's going to disappear. If you want it to just stay put, you can pin it using this little pin here. Now when I paint, it's going to stay where it's at. And you can of course drag it to move it anywhere that you want to move it to. I think something like this looks a little more appropriate. Kind of a back to the future thing going on here. Next let's take a look at the properties bar up here at the top. The first option is to reset, and if you paint something, you don't like what you painted and you just want to reset this whole thing back to default, you can click on reset, and then click on OK, and it gets rid of all your particle shop changes here. 
You can also paint and then just use the undo or the redo. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of Control Z and Control Y to redo. You can use the properties bar to make changes to the brush. You can change the brush size, the brush opacity, the amount of color variability, and some other properties. These properties are going to change depending on the brush that you have selected. You can also choose to vary the opacity or the brush size with pen pressure if you're using a tablet. And if you make any changes to this brush, let's say that I change the color variability and I change the size and I change some other settings and I want it just to go back to how it was originally, I can click on the reset tool and that's going to reset this brush to its factory defaults. Let's select another kind of brush like this flare brush and let's see what that does. This gives us some pretty cool lens flares like you would see in photography. And for this particular brush, there's a property for grain which is your paper texture. So if you want more grain, you can increase that setting. If you want less grain, you can turn it down. If we zoom in, you can see that speckly grain in one and less of it in the other. You have some options to choose your paper texture here. So this is going to control the texture you get with the grain. So let's try something like this random cracks here. Now there's very little grain, but if we add a bunch of grain, you're really going to see those cracks show up. So now you can make instant stained glass windows. This is of course the zoom, so you can zoom in and out to certain views. You can hold spacebar and you can pan the view if you want to. If you want to resize your brush, you can hold down Control and Alt and tap and drag your stylus. You can resize your brush. The important thing to note about the brush sizing is even if I make my brush really big, some brushes have maximum sizes and the size that you'd pick for your brush isn't always representative of the actual size of the stroke you get. You can kind of think of the size as the amount of distance that the particles are going to travel. And as I mentioned before, a lot of these brushes have their own special properties. This particular ethereal brush has count, so you can control the amount of particles. So I can have fewer. So you'll definitely want to experiment with all these brushes, but just be aware that there's a whole bunch more settings up here to kind of tweak and customize your brushes. Now it's important to note that if you apply an effect or you cancel an effect, or even if you, or even if you close and open Photoshop again, your brushes are going to retain the last settings that you gave them. So for instance, this is an entirely new piece here. And if I use this flare brush that I used on the last piece, you can see it still has that paper texture or that grain. So if I want to reset that, I need to click on reset. That'll put it back to its default setting. Since Particle Shop is in a window, you can move that window around if you don't want it to be right on top of Photoshop. You can maximize it or minimize it. And of course you can close it if you just want to cancel your changes and close that plugin. Now let's take a look at what happens if we create a new layer and we apply the Particle Shop effect to that layer. We'll go to Filter, Painter, Particle Shop. So what you're seeing here is just that single blank layer. You're not seeing the layer underneath it with the city. So unfortunately, this is going to be kind of a hard way to work when you're compositing because you're going to have to kind of guess where to put things. So for instance, I could take this laser and paint in a laser burst right here. I could click on save and then I can take that laser burst and I can move it into place and I can change the blend mode to screen. And there we go. We have our laser burst. If you wanted to go ahead and combine this separate layer with the layer below it, you could just go to Layer, Flatten Image, and then you can go to Filter, Particle Shop, and that effect has been applied. And then you could keep adding to this with more layers. So if you're using the particle brushes in Particle Shop, it's really just easier to work on a flattened image rather than a layered image. But it's also worth mentioning that this is not the way that these brushes work in Painter. In Painter, if you're painting on a separate layer, you'll be able to see the layers that are underneath it. So while we're on that note, let's talk a little bit about the differences between Particle Shop's particle brushes and Corel Painter 2015 and 2016's particle brushes. These brush packs are available separately for purchase in Particle Shop and in Corel Painter 2016. The packs and the brushes are exactly the same, but you'll have a lot more control over the brushes in Painter. So if I use a similar particle brush here in Corel Painter, you can see that I can paint just like I can do in Particle Shop, but I can work on a separate layer and I can see the layers below it. So I can move this layer around and I have a lot more control over the brush itself. I can go into the advanced brush controls 
and I can change how these particles work in this particles palette. For instance, I can turn off global chaos and paint, and now my rays will be more straight. Or I can turn on global chaos, my particles will move around a lot more, and the lines will be more wavy or more jagged. And there's just tons and tons of controls that you can add to this brush. And what's even better is if you like this brush and you like these settings, you can save this as a brush variant. So I can save this one particular brush here and I can have many, many, many different particle brushes, as many as I want to create. The other difference between Particle Shop and Painter is that if you're using Painter, you'll have access to all of Painter's features. So if you wanted to blend things using the blenders like, let's say for instance, Diffuse Blur to maybe soften these effects or paint in some other things that particle brushes can't do, you could do that. So if you're wondering, should I choose Particle Shop or should I choose Painter? It's really going to depend on what you're doing for a living. If you're doing mostly image editing and you're a designer or a photographer and you just want something to add effects to photos or images, then Particle Shop is going to be the right fit for you. If you're doing anything fine art related like painting portraits or cloning or doing any kind of painting, you're probably going to want to go with Corella Painter because you're going to have so many more options for creating artwork and controlling your brushes. And Painter is optimized for painting, whereas Particle Shop is optimized more for adding effects to photos. So to end this video, I'm just going to kind of do a quick time lapse of using some of these brushes to go ahead and add effects to this photo. This is a photo of downtown Seattle, which is really close to where I live. So let's go ahead and use this lighted up pack for an example. So there you go, that's Particle Shop for Adobe Photoshop. Definitely worth checking out if you're a designer, photographer, or an artist who's interested in enhancing your work with some really cool particle brush effects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, take a quick second to click the like button and share this video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.